everyone, I have a question for you. Have you ever had anyone call you? Not on the phone, not on the phone, like, but like, say you're outside and your mom calls you for dinner. What other ways do you get called? Pastor Jennifer, Pastor Jennifer. <laughs> Did you hear that? Where's that coming from? I don't know where that's coming from. Well, anyway, back, what were you, what were you gonna say, Emerson? Your parents call you when you're at the park? That you need to do chores? <laughs> yes. I bet they do call you when they, when they do that. Let's see, anyone else? Pastor Jennifer, Pastor Jennifer. Well, that's weird. Did you guys hear that? I think someone is calling me. You think? I don't know. Well, we're, since we're talking about someone being called, right? Being called. We're not gonna. We're we're not gonna worry at all. We're we're gonna worry about the Bible stories we're here today. So we heard one already from Samuel. God was calling Samuel, right? Right. They're they're both stories about being called. Pastor Jennifer. Pastor Jennifer. Are one of you doing this? Wait a second. <coughs> Are one of you doing this? You sure? Yeah. You're positive. Yeah. Okay, because it's starting to get a little annoying. <laughs> is it is it any one of you guys out there? Is it you? You sure? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Well, let the stories in the Bible. Let's get back to the. Let's get back to the to the to the lesson. Stories in the Bible. So in the first reading, God calls Samuel. So we're walking, and and he keeps uh, when he's sleeping in the temple. And in our gospel lesson, we're going to hear about Jesus calling Philip and Nathaniel to come follow him. And the stories of these calls are kind of unexpected, but in both stories, the people who are called have to trust. And believe in the call, even if they either can't hear the person or can't see the person who's calling or don't know where the, where the call is coming from, right? So the call can come, you know, mostly it's a call from God. Pastor Jennifer, Pastor Jennifer. Okay, I'm getting a little annoyed. We got to go find out who is calling me. You guys want to help me? Okay, let's, let's walk over here. Come on. Let's go over here. Let's go look at these people. Because this is our choir. They, they sing a lot, right? So they could be caller. Any of you calling me? No. No? no? Well, let's see. How about, let's walk over here. Let's walk over here. Maybe, maybe back there? Pastor John? Maybe? Is that you, Pastor John? No? It's not him. What about any of you? No? Then it's got to be somebody. Let's see. Let's, oh, let's walk back here. Goodness. We're going to find this person, aren't we? We're going to find this person. Who is it? You think it's who? Mr. Fisher? I, I don't know. Alan's in the... Is it you? No, it's not you? I wonder who it is. Who's the last people we haven't asked? That's them. Look at them. So, so I'm glad we found you. So what can we do for you? Can you bring the offering plates? Can we bring the offering plates? Do you guys know where the offering plates are? And let's, go, let's go find them. Well, there's one, but look at us on the other two. Let's find the other two. Let's find the other two. You want help? Find the other two. So hold on to that. You see the other ones? No. Ah, yes, they're right there, Aubrey. Why don't you grab those? Give one to Zachary. So, so let's take them back to Mr. Dwayne and Ms. Chris. Come on back this way. So let's make sure they have what they need. Let's make sure they have what they need. So you want to give those plates to them? Yeah, you got a little bit of extra stuff in here. Thank you. Was that helpful? Yes, sir. Wonderful. All right, you guys come back up front with me. <laughs> so, we learned something today. That we can be called, and we can be called to do something. So was that, nice? was that a nice thing for us to do? To bring it, because they're going to need that later to pass out to everybody else. I'm not sure everybody will be happy about it, but... <laughs> but that, what that shows us, basically is that um, 
Just like God can call Samuel and Philip to do God's work, we were called to do God's work too. We were called to bring those offering plates to help them out. And so just like Samuel and Philip and Nathaniel were all called, we can be called and got some of God's most important work can be done by those of us who are called by God to love and to treat people and to treat people well and to give back to everyone else. Right? So that's our lesson for today. God's God we are called by God to help God's people and help God's people every day. So you ready to say a prayer? Okay. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. And thank you for all the work you do. How you teach us to hear your call. And to help us work every day. To be your hands and feet. To help those in need. Amen. Thank you guys. chapter. Glory to you, Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. He said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of finding in John's quirky account of the calling of Jesus' disciples in today's gospel. Jesus finds Philip. Philip finds Nathaniel. Philip then tells Nathaniel that they have found Jesus. And then Nathaniel finds that Jesus knows a lot more about him than he'd even imagined. And this all got me to thinking that one of the best feelings in the world is when you are found. You know what I mean? I'll give you an example. A few years ago, when I went on a pilgrimage to walk in the footsteps of the Apostle Paul in Greece and Turkey, I had one experience of being truly lost, truly lost in Athens. One moment I was walking along, listening to the headset that they give you, you know, a little tour guide, and they're telling you about all the structures, and I'm just looking up at all the things going around, and I'm looking, and I'm listening, and then all of a sudden, the sound cuts out. I had gotten too far away from the transmitter, so I was far away from my group. And I looked around, I turned around, I looked in all directions, I didn't see a single person that I recognized. 
I, not, not, not anything. And the, the problem was, when I turned around, I couldn't, I couldn't really find, you know, I'm looking in every single little pocket of people, and then it hit me that I'm in a foreign country, I don't speak the language, while I can sort of read the letters, I don't necessarily speak modern Greek, and I didn't even know what the name of the hotel was where I was staying. So I was petrified. I was absolutely, I, and just for a heart-stopping moment, I was like, what am I gonna do? I guess I'll have to call the, Amer the American Embassy? Or, I, I really didn't know. And then I heard the tour guide's voice in my ear again. And she said, Jennifer, Jennifer, turn around. We're right behind you. And I can't tell you the flood of relief that came over me when I saw them and was back connected with them. It was about three to four minutes of my life that I will never forget. I was absolutely petrified. But what I experienced was the same sense of joy when any of us finds ourselves lost and then are finally found. Maybe it's the delight of a child playing hide and seek who, though having put some thought and effort into his or her hiding place, is nevertheless so happy when you do find them. Or maybe it's the time you are out on a long hike and you got off the beaten, track, beaten path and you couldn't figure out where you were and you're turning around, you're not even sure what you're going to do, and then all of a sudden there's a trail marker there and you're suddenly found once again. Or maybe it's not a geographical lostness, but an emotional or an existential sense of being out of place. A young adult lost to addiction who finds help. A friend lost to depression who finds a measure of solace in a new relationship. A parent lost to dementia who still lights up when they hear you sing Amazing Grace. There are not many things in this world that feel better than being found when you're lost. Except perhaps when you are the one who finds someone who is lost. Even, or maybe especially, if they didn't even know they were lost in the first place. So I'll tell you another little story. I remember my mother sharing this story often about my sister Susanna. She's the youngest of my sisters, and she was much younger than the rest of us. And we all went to the county fair. And so we're a family of six, mind you. So that, it took every single amount of patience and vigilance from my parents to make sure we all went in the same direction. And as you can imagine, us older girls, we wanted to go on all the rides while my sister Susanna was too small. And so my mother said that she would uh, sit on this bench and wait for us while we went on whatever ride it was. And we're not exactly sure what happened, but somehow, as they waited together on that bench, my sister Susanna wandered away from it. And it took only a moment of distraction, and then she was gone. And of course, you can imagine my mother's panic as she thought, like the same, we all know, how, how, how quickly someone can abduct a child in a public place. And she said she remembers calling her name and no response. She then goes to security, and they set in motion a search and that, turned, that finally turned up Susanna in what felt like an hour, but was only probably about five or six minutes. She'd wandered to an attraction not that far away, and she had wormed her little five-year-old self to the front of the crowd of the people waiting in line. And so when my mother saw her, she scooped her up and squeezed her and said, it's over, it's over, we found you, don't worry, you're going to be okay. But when, but when Susanna just looked at her, smiling and blinking, my mother realized that Susanna had no idea she had been lost. She'd simply been blissfully watching the crowd, and she'd never felt lost or had no idea what all the fuss was about, let alone the panic she had caused my mother. And as my mother retells this story on occasion, she says that feeling of finding her child who had been lost was about the best feeling she'd ever experienced. A feeling of relief, of love, of wholeness, and of confidence that the world was a good and safe place. There is right now a lot of lostness for ourselves, but also in our churches, our country, and our world. And perhaps for good reason, living through a pandemic, experiencing rampant injustice and intense division, 
There is a readiness to resort to violence to achieve dubious ends. A disregard not just for facts, but verifiable reality. Yes, a lot of lostness. And truthfully, I find it frustrating, even maddening. Yet this passage in our gospel today also reminds me that God seems to have a heart for the lost. The reckless younger siblings of this world or the rule-following rigid and self-righteous ones that are older alike. Which includes people that I get mad at and people that get mad at me. And even includes me when I am lost, whether I know it or not. God has a heart for the lost, no matter who we are. So as I wrestled with the text this week, a week of which, if I'm honest, has been fraught with its own sense of confusion and lostness, I'm not exactly sure what other message I can deliver from today's quirky, odd story in the Gospel of John, other than the joy of being found, even if I didn't know I was lost. And quite frankly, I'm not really sure what you may do with all of this either. But just for the record, I am grateful for the one of, for one of the promises that is tucked into this passage, and that is that God keeps seeking us, all of us, whether we know it or not, whether we're looking for God or not. God seeks the lost, continually looking, searching, finding, and then ultimately and always inviting, come and see. And then hopefully, our answer to that invitation is here I am, Lord. May the good news of the God who will not give up, who sheds glory to take on our lot and life, who journeys to the cross to show us just how far God will go to seek the lost and tell us that we are loved. May that good news be upon you this week as you venture out yet again into a world in need. Amen. Amen. Amen.
our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift it to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your Son. He is your light, shining in our darkness, and revealing to us your mercy and light. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day where all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving life. By your Spirit, bless us and this meal that, refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power, for the benefit of all, and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We have a few announcements. Uh, Blessing Box is being well used. We are grateful for everyone who gives to that particular ministry. And this week, uh, we have been, um, myself, uh, I've been invited to talk about our Blessing Box and our Tool Lending Library at uh, this this, um, quarter's Hendersonville Pastors Fellowship. So we're going to be getting the word out even more for both of those ministries. So we are excited about that. We do have some volunteers that are needed on Sunday, January 21st, which is next week, to break down some diapers and feminine hygiene products and some other things into smaller packages. And it looks like we'll meet in the library right after service. So if you have just even a few minutes, that would be really helpful because many hands make light work. And it is a true blessing to our community. Uh, We have uh, coming up, we have on February the 11th, so so about a month away, uh, we have a Shrove Shrove Tuesday on a Sunday. So Fat Tuesday on a Sunday, because that's with Mardi Gras, that's typically when you have pancake breakfasts. And so we're going to have a pancake brunch with a pancake bar, and we're going to ask for donations for our youth, because we know that during, during December, the Cookie Walk, which is normally their main fundraiser of the year, got canceled because of the tornadoes. Uh, did, we did make some, some uh, linemen and first responders very happy with all the cookies, so they didn't go to waste, but we would like our youth to have an opportunity to recoup some of that so they can do some fun stuff during the year, so please plan to join us then. Before that, the congregational meeting will be on January 28th, so that's two weeks from today, and so we are going to invite you, all of you members to stay in the sanctuary after worship so that we can vote on a few things, some bylaws, and we need to vote for voting members for our Senate Assembly and a variety of other things. Immediately following this service is our Let's Chat opportunity. We missed that on um, last month because of the tornadoes, obviously, but our council and myself will be staying in the the sanctuary after worship, so you're welcome to ask questions about the church, just in general, and whatever they can do to offer you better communication, this this is our opportunity. So please make plans to stick around. It took a few minutes last night, but it was a really good conversation, so I invite you to think about sticking around for that. Uh, We do have one other thing. Any any other announcements for the life of the congregation? Okay, seeing none, there's a really special ministry that we have at St. Timothy, and it's called our Visitation Ministry. If you are interested in participating, it is a way for us to reach more of our shut-ins and people who are in the hospital and people who might need extra care. And I can't be in all places at once. And we do have some wonderful, thoughtful volunteers, Nancy Malone, Dale Olson, and Susan Morgenstern. Susan, if you'll come up. We always send our communion out with a blessing. We do this on the second Sunday, but it is a wonderful reminder of the valuable ministry of outreach that these people are doing on behalf of St. Timothy, so thank you. So let us pray. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist us in this ministry on which we are sent forth. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this sacrament, that through the body and blood of your Son, we may all know the comfort of your abiding presence. Amen. Please rise for the blessing. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen.